A couple of months ago, I launched my first assault on the IPA. In the following weeks, I was hit by a brutal counter siege of IPA defenders. But I was not snuffed out. In fact, I cut my teeth on your strikes. And now I'm more powerful than you can hope to stop. Also, the first video wasn't articulated particularly well, and I'm going to take another go at it. So a lot of people seem to miss the point of the anecdotes about the Polish iphoneme and allophonic ash raising. Basically, these themselves aren't the problem. This is just to illustrate the problem that phonemes and phones are not just different, but irreconcilable. The English phoneme in the word trap can't really be said to be pronounced like a. Ah. Not because it's pronounced like a eh before a nasal, and not because it's pronounced like a eh in New Zealand English, it's because it isn't pronounced at all. It's realized as a pronunciation, but it can only be said to be pronounced any kind of way in the most abstract sense. Think of it this way. In the front, we have a phoneme, and it goes into the machine, a giant algorithm that factors in your accent and dialect and allophony to produce the realization of said phoneme, a pronunciation. Sure, one of them might be the most common. It might even be the default, but these aren't the same. A phoneme is just an idea. A phone is a sound. So back to Reba. A lot of people thought that writing the phoneme pronounced as I using the letter U was a problem, and that's why the IPA had failed, but no, the phoneme and phone are different. You can write this any way you want. The failure is that we use the IPA to write it. We can spell the English phoneme er using the R sound, even though as anyone can tell, it's not pronounced R, because this is just a symbol, and changing the phoneme to R doesn't fix anything because I actually realize it as R, moving the broad transcription symbol so that it more closely matches the narrow transcription transcription symbol isn't going to help that. It's only going to make it worse, because if you see this in a transcription, you're going to assume that's the way it's pronounced, and you're just going to get burned even worse when an exception comes up. The only remedy is to go in the opposite direction so that people see it and try to realize it correctly. And maybe they won't be right, but they'll break paradigms. That's why the IPA should be retired. You can't use an international alphabet to write phonemes, which are necessarily specific to a language. And in a lot of cases, people know this fact. Look at historical linguistics. People write length with a macron, not an angle colon. People write nasalization with an ogo neck, not a tilde. And as nobody could wrap their heads around, Proto-European uses the voiceless diacritic for syllabic consonants. In historic languages, we don't use the IPA to write phonemes. Why do we do it in modern languages? There's a good reason why. Well, there's a reason why. If the letter you use to write a phoneme matches up with its most common phone, people will be able to get the most general idea of how to pronounce it. It's good enough. But is it? This English sound th is realized differently from the Spanish th. They have different allophony, they're from different sources, why do we pretend they're the same? If you ask someone how to pronounce this phoneme, they'll give you th. If you retire the IPA, then ask them the same question, they'll say, in what language? Which is the correct answer, but I guess it's close enough. That brings me to the case against narrow transcription. Now, I'll admit this one was more tenuous, and I kind of threw it together the week of recording, but let me expand on it. The human body can produce, potentially, an infinite amount of phones. Well, actually, because of the Planck length, there is- Shut up! You don't understand quantum mechanics as well as you think you do. But the IPA provides a finite amount of symbols. Not just a finite amount, but a limited amount. So what, we're just fine expressing it like this? Well, yeah, right? I mean, measurements like weight are also infinite, but that doesn't mean you have to write everything. You just check the face, and then you say, yup, this is 15 milligrams. It's called sig figs. You don't care about extra measurements if you can't detect them with your instruments. And in language, those instruments are your ears, because language is about humans and what we can detect. And yet, I still find it a little disturbing that narrow transcription is meant to be the universally accurate one, and yet it's necessarily imprecise. Just by looking at a number, you can tell how narrow it is, but not so for linguistics, which is why I propose, BAM! One set of brackets for I'm pointing out this one specific allophony, and two for this is as close to accurate as I could make it. How do you know that I'm right about this? Because people are already doing it. But back to broad transcription. Look, no matter what IPA symbol you use, it's gonna be inaccurate. So stop caring about accuracy and start caring about legibility. I shouldn't have to zoom in to see all the diacritics. Clarity, giving people the right idea. Heck, care about calligraphy. The IPA is awful to look at. All right, if you don't care, if you're fine compressing that machine, then that's your cross-eyed bear. But just give me, just give me one more shot. <laughs> this 
is a breathy voiced lingual labial apical trill. How do I write this using the IPA? Well, I have to use a ton of diacritics. Obviously, my keyboard doesn't have that, so I gotta open a new tab, type out IPA keyboard, click on the result. Remember that there are two ways to write a lingual labial consonant. Pick one, search for the alveolar trill for like 30 seconds until I remember it's not on the special keyboards because it's just R. So I look through the diacritics for the seagull, then the stupid hat, and then the two dots, and my brain doesn't find them automatically because all the symbols look the same, and then copy-paste it, stop, think about it, realize I got apical and laminal mixed up, this is actually a laminal trill, so I go back, I can't skip through the diacritics because it's all parsed as one character, so I have to go back, go back, add the box, then find the diuresis a second time! Now, would it surprise you if I told you there was a better way? Of course it wouldn't! Nothing could be worse than this! Anyway, the X Sampa is a rival to the IPA, but it never caught on, mostly because it arrived later. It only uses symbols available on a standard QWERTY keyboard, so it's a lot easier to use. That diacritical mess is written in X Sampa as Now, the X Sampa was originally only used because computers couldn't support IPA, but why did we drop it out when Unicode added IPA diacritics? This is just easier and more accessible. Although, the IPA has the advantage that you already know it, but you can only make that argument once. Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's. Dang it! 